Welcome to the Beck and Siri Show. And here at Team Series Tri Club, it's not just about swim, bike, run. It's about who you become. On our show, we don't just talk to you about swimming, cycling, and running. We talk about mindset. We talk about fearless authenticity and being your very best self. Hey, this is Ashley from Team Serious Tri Club. In tonight's episode, Beck and Siri talk about intermittent recovery and the importance of taking breaks, their go-to recovery tips and favorite recovery hacks, and more. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Team Serious Tri Club live chat. Sorry about the way I look. We just got done feeding the horses, and it is 98 degrees. had a big day degrees. today? We want to hear what you've done, because yeah. we've had a massive day. Let us know. We want to know, because we think we've had a big day, but I bet you there's some people that have had a much bigger day than us, and it's all perspective, right? So this is not sweat, but I just put my head under the tap on myself. I want to talk about intermittent recovery, you guys. Hi, Megan Newman. Great to see you. I want to talk about intermittent recovery and how this relates not just to training for a triathlon, but how it relates to life itself. Because remember, when you recover, you're not just recovering your body. You're recovering your mind, you're recovering your, your so basically, there's mental recovery, emotional recovery, physical recovery, and spiritual recovery. We wanna do things that fill us up spiritually, that give us energy. Want, we want to give our bodies physical rest so that we can recover from physical work. We want to give ourselves mental rest to recover from mental tasks, such as being at work or working on a computer. So just like training as a professional triathlete, I trained six to eight hours a day, but I didn't go from one thing to the next and have no breaks at all. I would most of the time do one session, go home, wouldn't think about training, wouldn't talk about training, would do something that filled me up, whether it was reading a book or listening to my favorite music or calling home. So in between sessions, and I would do physical recovery, like getting in my Normatec boots or taking an Epsom salt bath. So in between sessions, I would do different things to recover not just my body, but my mind, my emotions, and I would do things that would fill me up with energy. So just like recovering in between sessions as a triathlete, you also need to consider that you need intermittent recovery breaks during the day, whether you're at work. Every 60 to 90 minutes, this is what I recommend, every 60 to 90 minutes, take time to walk away from your desk, leave your phone behind, do five to 15 minutes of something that relaxes you, fills you up, do meditation, do breathing exercises, go out, watch the sunset, listen to your favorite music, call a friend, do something that allows you to recover mentally from the work that you're doing throughout the day, okay? If you're having a big fight, okay, emotionally exhausting, you're, you're having an argument with someone, sometimes the best possible thing you can do is walk away and take five minutes to not think about the fight, to not think about the issue at hand, but go spend time, play with your dog in the yard. Take five minutes and get that recovery, that emotional recovery. If you don't take these intermittent recovery breaks every 60 to 90 minutes, if possible, you will eventually run out of energy. Now, even if you run out of mental energy, that is going to affect what you can do physically. Okay, so it doesn't just have to be a hard training session that makes you exhausted physically. It can be you exhausting yourself mentally and not taking those intermittent recovery breaks to rejuvenate, to refill, to energize. That mental exhaustion can lead to bad physical performance. So to all of you, my advice, okay, I love it. Janet Dixon, I worship my afternoon quick naps, awesome. Even if that is, you know, I didn't necessarily nap as an athlete, but I would lie in bed for 15 to 20 minutes and just close my eyes. And I would tell myself, I'm not gonna think about training. I'm not gonna think about my next session. I'm not gonna think about racing. I'm gonna think about something that makes me laugh or something that makes me happy so that I get a break from what I'm doing the rest of the day. So, so important to you guys. I can't even express to you how important this is because again, Physical exhaustion, if you're not taking breaks during the day and physically recovering, will affect your 
mental and emotional capacity. So someone says something that totally has nothing to do with you, you might take it personally, you might cry, you might get upset, you might start a fight. So if you want to have balance in every area of your life, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, take these intermittent recovery breaks to give all those systems the rest of it. Okay, so now, guys, is that better? Please let us know. Um, Sue was talking about intermittent recovery as in breaks, and I want to talk about recovery as in, like, for your training. Someone told us the other day that we need to have a more holistic approach to our coaching, um, that we should include nutrition and recovery and sleep and... I believe we really do. And I think that if you take advantage of our live chats and you really listen to our podcasts and you're here and you're present and you're watching all of our feeds, if you don't follow us on Instagram, please do, because we have a very holistic overall approach. Don't you believe that? Too, Absolutely. Siri? But guys, when you're in the club, get the full experience. Listen to the live chats. Watch the YouTube videos. Get all the information that you can that will give you a clear picture of what our entire philosophy is. Because as you know, we value recovery massively. Nutrition. We value nutrition massively. But you wouldn't know that if you were only just following a plan. So those are the of you that are here, awesome. You're getting that secret sauce. But take advantage of all the resources, guys, that is right there at your disposal. Right there at your fingertips. Yeah, our YouTube channel is also really good. Um, Tim Sears Tri Club YouTube channel. It has all the pictures, and so does our app, actually. If you log into the app, we all have an app. All you have to do, do is go to teamseriestriclub.com and go to the login part of the um, platform, and you can log in and find all the videos, all the previous live chats, and all my demonstration videos as well. We do so many of those if you don't want to be able to have to find them on the um, actual group but i also series it's just siri lindley on instagram i'm tim series tri club underscore rebecca kick god knows why it's that long i was talking to mel about the names it's really hard to get the right name but trisha look she follows everything oh, and trisha. she's made huge gains because she does follow everything she listens amazing, and applies trisha. it so yes that's amazing i love that i love that so if you have any and janet dixon of course all and the, you may all, all the be usual making, suspects yeah, yeah you may all be making amazing gains without listening to that stuff and that's awesome but the question is how much more could you be getting out of this whole experience if you truly took advantage of all the resources that are at your disposal? Yeah, exactly. um, You've got the camera on the counter over there. No, I haven't. I've got it on oh, you. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, guys. So, any down. questions on rest and recovery? Um, and I hope that you all know that you are worth taking that time. And when you feel guilty about having a cat nap or when you feel guilty about walking away from your desk for five minutes, know that you are actually doing yourself and whoever you're working for or spending time with, you're doing them a favor. Because by taking care of you, you're gonna have more to give to the people around you. And by taking care of you and taking those breaks, you're gonna have more clarity, more creativity, more energy to put towards your work. So okay, my question before you get back to me is what's your go-to recovery while we're quickly on recovery? What's your favorite? You have to only choose one. For, okay, so physical recovery. Yep. Um, my favorite thing, I love my Norma Tech boots. They yep. make me feel so much better. I also love Epsom salt baths. Yep. Um, that would be my favorite recovery tools for training. My favorite um, tools for recovery in between like work, the work day, every 60 to 90 minutes is I will walk outside, I'll leave my phone behind and I'll walk out and I'll spend time with my horse. So if you have a dog or a cat or a turtle or a fish, just go and observe them. Like don't bring your phone, don't bring anything, just go and observe, you know, how adorable they are, how cute they are, or, you know, to understand more about, you know, their character and who they are. Um, but that to me fills me up, definitely going outside, um, taking deep breaths, um, nature, nature and, and animals is what fills me up, rejuvenates me. And even if I have a day where I have like six, you know, hour long sessions in a row, if I take my five to 10 minutes in between those sessions at the end of the day, I still feel raring and ready to continue. Okay. What I'm, about you? I would agree. Norma Tech is definitely up there for me. I think in winter, it would be my Epsom salt bath for sure. Um, I feel like taking my F2C greens is like huge for recovery in the morning. Doing that fast, it has been huge to recovery. I haven't had any inflammation and much less soreness. Um, and then I would say with my plantar fasciitis, it's now gone, thank God, would be my... Um, 
the trigger, I forget what it's called, the Hypervolt, which has been so amazing for my plantar fasciitis. So that's been my probably two favorite go-tos. Um, I do love the vegan um, protein powder by F2C. That's amazing. It's uh, The chocolate one tastes delicious, and so does the normal whey one. It's all organic as well. Um, I love those, and um, I feel a difference when I take that straight after a hard workout. So... Okay, so we've got some questions. Those are my go-tos as well. Yeah, regular massage, infrared sauna. There's so many, there's expensive ways, but you can be parts of, say, gyms. Infrared, I think, is incredible. It's really meant to help with inflammation. Um, Biocharging is also helpful for earthing for overall wellness, like to reduce, like, chronic disease. Um, and grounding, you can do that by just walking on the ground for 22 minutes. It takes 22 minutes for our blood to go around our body. So if you walk on the ground surface um, for 22 minutes, um, that's one circulation usually of, of someone's blood around your body that will ground you so that it will charge your body the same as the earth. Now I learned this off Ben Greenfield, any Ben Greenfield fans out there, he's amazing. And um, instead of using say a, a really expensive PMF machine or the biocharger, all that stuff that's just so expensive to use, although you can get it osteo strong with your membership, you can literally be barefoot in the sand, in the water, um, on the grass, and that will do the same exact thing as all these earthing mats and these, um, you know, these uh, uh, PMF machines, um, literally just go barefoot on the ground. Um, that's a great way to ground and get rid of all that dirty electricity and get your body charged the same as the earth. Because what, we, what happens with all the dirty electricity and all the, uh, the electricity poles and our phone signals and the Wi-Fis and all the electric poles and the, all the awful like UV light, all that sort of crap, all that stuff does is it's just really, really bad for our bodies and it gets into our and changes our charge of our body. So I think the best way to, to do that is to walk outside. Yep, 22 minutes three times a week is effective as antidepressants. Trisha, I'm so glad you were on the same wave with me as what, like that. Not many people know that, that all they have to do is go walk barefoot. That's why there was no such thing as like not a high rate of cancer like 30, 40 years ago when we, you know, didn't care and ran around barefoot as kids. So you, there's definitely something to it. So... Um, yeah, I love that. Cryotherapy is amazing. It's not so expensive. I think it's great. I'm kind of not sold on it yet. I, don't, I know that there are benefits of hot cold. I feel like cryo um, sometimes can be a little bit much because if you have inflammation, you can have like an ice bath, but the cryo goes so deep. I don't know. I just I worry that it actually makes our tendons and, and ligaments even a little bit even maybe too brittle. I, I don't know. I'm not quite sold. I on take the a cryo. cold shower yeah. every single night. Cold so shower. Cold, cold shower. shower is amazing. Yeah. Um, the micro dosing of like coldness is really good for our body. Um, it's really really anything in small amounts is obviously really good for your body. You shock your body. It's really really good for it. Um, spend time in nature. Yes. Tell us what your favourites are. Now, if you have any questions, um, let us know. Um, someone had a question about tempo. What does tempo mean um, in training? And um, for us, it may not mean the same for other coaches, but I'll give you my two cents and Siri can. So tempo for me is really just a change in pace, um, depending on how you feel. And I know some tempo runs should be done at like an 8 out of 10 for some people. But the thing is, an 8 out of 10 for some people on some days is really slow. And then if you're having a great day, it may be way faster. So it's all relative to perceived effort and how you feel. So when Siri and I say up tempo, we literally just mean changing pace as to how you're feeling. And if you're yeah. feeling great that day, it may be super fast. And but always make the easy easy. That's what we say. Get out of the grey zone um, and go by feel. And your tempo runs aren't usually generally um, something that you'll throw in as a key 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 run session. But if you feel good, you can really get something out of it. What would you say? Yeah, Sue? I would say um, typically a seven out of ten. Mm -hmm. um, but also, again, exactly what Beck said. It's just a change of pace to what you would normally do at that easy pace. So if you're feeling great on that day, it'll be a seven out of ten. If you're feeling real crappy on that day, you may be running, you know, a five might feel like a 10 on that day. So then make your tempo a five and make the rest of it a three. Um, so tempo is just, um, it's a great way to train. We may say half iron tempo, which would be a realistic, ideal race effort, okay? Realistic ideal race effort for half Ironman, if it says half Ironman, or for Ironman, if it says Ironman. Um, but yeah, so race speed, Trisha, but if race speed is tempo, if we say Ironman tempo, mm -hmm. or half iron tempo, or 10K tempo, um, but if it doesn't say anything about 10K, half Ironman, or Ironman tempo, what that means is just lift the rhythm 
from your easy to whatever feels right on that day, depending on how fatigued your body is or how good you feel, um, add that tempo, which typically I think turns out to be about a seven out of 10. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Great. Now, any other questions? There are a lot of people on plans right now, um, and sometimes they can be a little confusing. So at the start of most of our plans now, we have a glossary, but you can also find that hopefully in the topics. Um, if not, I'll pin it. But um, hopefully in the topics, you'll see a glossary, which gives you guys a little key tips on sort of what to have before starting the plan, like pool boy, band. It's not highly expensive stuff. It's literally a band you can make out of an inner tube. Uh, pool buoy, any buoys we recommend because it puts your legs in the same position as... Uh, you sort of would be if you're in a wetsuit. Um, what else, Sarah? Cadence meter for sure is something we've listed that you really should have. We don't really care about speed because that's kind of irrelevant unless you're sitting on a trainer in the same exact conditions every day. But cadence is a big thing. Um, it's always great to have access to a treadmill for speed work and for technique, but it's not absolutely necessary. A trainer would be very helpful for doing big gear work if you don't live around hills and doing high intensity work out efforts on the bike if you have to if you live in a city and you can't get out. Uh, trainers, I'd say crucial, crucial. especially if you live crucial. in a city or you are in the middle of winter or it's a rainy day. And you can find some you guys that are maybe you can find a used one. Yeah. God, you could probably find a used one for under a hundred bucks, but you could also find a decent one for a hundred and fifty bucks. But yeah. absolutely it allows for, you know, not only those key focus sessions, but also on in inclement weather, um, you can use your trainer. So um I, the feedback trainers are great too, and we are they're not in stock, they're sold out. They're amazing and very, very reasonable. And the tracks ones are expensive, but they're very good. Cyclops is another really good mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Um, Kristen, swim plan. Yes. What does drill mean? Okay. <laughs> I need to get my paddle to show you. So where there's many drills, and that's a great question. And let us know what plan you found that. Because if you were on the Ironman, I recommend anyone starting the sport should start on the 12-week beginner sprint plan. Because it has a library of, it's basically a, like a workbook and workshop of mini of a mini course in triathlon with all the videos. There's about 20 YouTube videos. So, Kristen, I will copy them and paste them over to you because mo all the plans should have that. But we're, we kind of assume that if you're doing a 70.3 tri plan, that you're probably um, have gone through have the, gone through that and kind of know what our lingo is. But we can, yeah. Oh, we, she's on. I'm on the 12 week beginner. Oh, tri good. Plan. So drill um, that you should have. Plenty of demos of the drill. Look for under the activity of another swim session. There should be options of drills um, or look in the glossary. I've done posted quite a few videos Last in that YouTube beginner plan. Drills. Yeah. yeah, I've definitely posted them in there. So you just probably need to find them. They might have been back in another swim session, depending on when you started. But um, I have posted um, quite a few drills in there. Um, as YouTube links, so just maybe go back to the glossary or have a look in a couple other sessions. One would be, man, there's so many. Well, let's say what a drill is. Oh, a drill yes. is <laughs> something, it's like, um, you know, say you were going to a track to run and you did the high knee drill or the kicking butt drill or, you know, crossovers drill. A drill is to prepare your body and prepare your, so a swim drill will be preparing you to use your best possible stroke, to be as efficient and effective as possible in the water. So for example, the one arm drill, you have one arm over a kickboard and the other arm, you're practicing your entry with your elbow higher than the rest, than, than where you're catching, okay? And a powerful finish out the back and you're focusing just on that one arm. So you make sure that you're getting a powerful catch, that you're not bending your wrist, that you're not dropping your elbow and that you're pulling deep in the water and finishing strong out the back of your stroke. So the one arm drill prepares you for when you start swimming, you know, your fifties or your hundreds, that your stroke is, is working efficiently and effectively. Okay. That's why we often start with drills, uh, at the beginning of the session so that you can feel good the rest of the swim. Yeah. So on the bike, we do one leg drills, okay, to ensure that all the muscles that work towards a strong pedal stroke are activated, okay? So if you do those drills at the start, you make sure everything's firing, and then when you start biking, you feel so much stronger. Yep. Just like doing run drills on the track, swim drills, so you can find those 
um, in the schedule. And if not, uh, check out YouTube or, um, you know, we can send you in I the right Kristen's direction. I know Kristen's stroke, and I know that um, one thing I wanted to work on is turnover. So I would say for you, and this is still a drill, for you, Kristen, I would get the pool boy band and do like 25s in your warm up. Say it's like a 200 and it says swim drill. I would get the pool boy band and just crank that arm cadence up, like really increase your stroke, stroke rate. rate. The only thing that I remember I noticed with you was the exit out the back was a little short. You weren't getting that full extension out the back and that's where the paddle drill comes in, where you hold the paddle over the top and pull really deep and push out the back. And the other one was um, stroke rate. And so the only way to pick that up would be band only, but for you it might be a little much straight away. So I'd go pool boy band for 25, like four 25s, and then try band only. And that will force you into a really good position because if you don't have a fast stroke rate, you're gonna sink. So yeah. that would be my tip. There's one last question on the tempo, which I'm gonna answer. Mm -hmm. um, race, okay, uh, should you be able to have a conversation? When you are running tempo, it should be annoying, annoying okay. to have a conversation. You can, but it's kind of like, oh, this makes it just too hard. Okay, so it's kind of like tempo could be your high end aerobic zone still, okay, but it could also be a little bit over that, like maybe an eight out of 10. So, and again, depending on how you race, like if, you, if I put um, Olympic distance tempo, I mean, that for me would be flat out. So, you yeah. know, if, so if I say half Ironman tempo for a professional athlete, that's gonna be really hard. But for an age grouper, we expect typically that you won't do that half iron tempo as hard mm -hmm. as the professionals will, okay? Mm -hmm. You can, and if you do, that's fine. But tempo, you get to decide. It's not a certain number of watts. It's not a certain speed. It's just um, the ideal race, pace, or effort that you would hold in whatever distance that tempo effort is meant to be, okay? Yep. Oh, that's great, Siri, thank you. Okay, we've got Megan, oh my God, Janet, I love the the band in the swim. That's funny, I was talking to my athlete, Karen Goebel, who couldn't even swim 100 meters when I first started with her, it's been over a year now. She can do 4K, she could probably do a kilometer with band only, and it's all been on working on strong, deep catch, um, really fast stroke rate and her breathing, and she's kicking butt with it. She said, oh, I put the band on, I don't even notice, I love it. So awesome. I love that. Lauren Weimar, then, now that name's kind of a new. I haven't seen you on very often. Thank you for being on. I've been listening to the podcast, and I've heard you talk about pre-race and in-race nutrition and hydration for tries. Does it, would you change after that for a short race like a sprint try yeah absolutely yes. very very different um thank you for asking and it does Great sort of question yeah it does sort of depend how long you would take to do that i mean i've i've known some athletes can take you know you might take two hours to do a sprint race and in saying that you definitely still need to um work on race day nutrition but i don't think pre-race is so important other than really breakfast for say a two hour olympic two hours if you're taking two hours to do a sprint or even olympic distance um it would depend on time so say it's two hours or under um i don't think carb loading is absolutely necessary i would say have a little bit of carbs the night before but no such thing as really carb loading and in the sprint race say it did take you two hours you still want to be having um a little bit of carbs for sure and yeah. a electrolyte you definitely don't need what you need in a half or a full um once you start getting to three or four hours you want to be starting to look at like one gram of carb per kilo of body weight per hour um but anything under two hours i think you could look at getting you know at least 50 percent so say say you're 60 kilos you'd be getting at least at least 30 grams of carbs um per kilo of body up uh, uh, for a 60 kilo person so that'd be about 50 uh, percent like so, so that's half a gram. Um, but it's not so important for the shorter stuff. No, um, like when I was racing, even but if mind I you, knew... Siri, when you raced, you ran an hour 56 for an Olympic. So some of these guys may take four hours okay. for an Olympic. But <laughs> what I'm saying is that for a two she hour... She was freaking fast. Oh, well, so were you. <laughs> no, so, I wasn't. Not so for a two-hour race, whatever that is, a sprint race, an Olympic distance race, I would have... A normal breakfast. Don't change your breakfast up on race day. No. Like, don't suddenly, you know, if you never eat eggs, suddenly, you know, eggs the morning of a race. Eat what you always eat before any hard session in training. So I'd have a good breakfast, and about 30 minutes before the start, I'd have, like, a gel or a half a gel. My bottle would be a mix of electrolytes and water, and about three quarters of the way through the bike, I'd have another gel and that was it. 
but it Wait, totally Wait, say that one more time. Me. I want to hear this. Normal breakfast. What was your normal breakfast? Let's tell them. Oh, I used to have like peanut butter on toast with banana. Yep. So peanut butter and banana on toast. Yep. Perfect. Protein, 30 fat, minutes carbs. before the start, a gel and some water. My bottle on the bike would be half electrolyte, half water and three quarters of the way through the bike. So in an Olympic distance race, um, somewhere around like minutes. 16 miles or yeah. so, I would have another gel and that was it. Mm -hmm. But I would drink at every station. Right. Yeah. And so remember that's Siri doing two hours. So if, if you're doing a sprint and you're a beginner, you may take two hours. So that would be about similar. And so breaking that down to um, grams. So banana and I think banana on toast with a little bit of butter or peanut butter, I think is just so good. It covers everything. I think it's perfect if you're used to that. But I wouldn't change anything for breakfast. Definitely don't not eat. This is not the time to do a fast. Um, but try to eat like two to three hours before and then have, say, a little banana before the race or you could try a gel before the race. But remember to drink water with it. As we said, you need like one gram of water for every one gram of carbohydrate. Mickey Willardin says two, but I'm going to say one. One's okay for especially short distances. So if you're going to have a 25-gram gel, which is usually 25 grams of carbs just before the start, um, I'd recommend having 250 mils of water as well. Not right, right before the start. Like, say, like 15 minutes, 10 minutes or something. Um, is that about right? Yeah. Yep. And yep. then, and then um, as series, like, series nutrition would be perfect for someone doing a two-hour sprint race. Um, an Olympic, if you're taking two hours for a sprint, you can take four for an Olympic, which would be what we raced four hours would be a half Ironman for us. And then you really have to start focusing on how many grams you're taking in. Like, above the two, three-hour mark, you want to be having probably close to one gram of carbs per kilobody per hour, plus a bottle of water and a bottle of electrolyte every hour after like two hours. I would even say on a two hour race, you would still need, I would recommend still one of water and one electrolyte on the bike if you can get that in, at least one and a half litres, so two 750 mil bottles if you can get one water, one electrolyte. Um, over a 20k, it's going to be hard, but get it in on the run then, just keep sipping. You want to just kind of keep sipping, you don't want to be bloated. Um, and you won't probably have, hopefully, too many salt problems in a in a two hour race or under really too much. So salt your food, I think that's the trick. Yeah, Siri. salt your food. It's yep. really been the trick. Like, I rarely use salt tablets because I'm kind of against them after something that happened a long time ago. But um, I'm so against salt tablets. So I just used to use this organic, like, red sea salt, red rock sea salt, which is, like, I forget the name of it. But um, Himalayan, sea, Himalayan salt. sea salt. That's it, like organic Himalayan sea salt. And I put it on my meals, like, three days out. And if you do that the night before, you're good. Like, um, unless it's crazy humid like in florida you're going to need to probably have salt over two hours yeah. but yeah 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 but i'm not the salt expert so but i would say salt your food any yeah. other questions you guys uh we've got one here i've been listening okay that's the same one what we're gonna try. okay i printed the plan caught up on the drills good 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 perfect trisha robinson a full sentence conversation is an easier robot pace tempo is our bex putting that on there thank you um, any other questions, you guys? Kristen's asking, I'm um, not sure of the context, but often it may be continuous 150 swim, you do 50 drill, 50 swim, 50 kick. Yes, perfect. That's exactly right, Becky. So I would do the drill on the kickboards an okay one, two for you, Kristen, like um, stroke on the kickboard, one arm drill on the kickboard. But I do think the band is going to be great for your stroke after seeing um, your stroke in the pool. It's actually really good. You just got to get a little deeper with your catch. So I think having the band will force you for, to a faster stroke and getting that little bit deeper. Um, Trish has been riding 56 miles on Saturday, so 90K. When you have to go to the bathroom on the bike, do you get off and just drop somewhere? <laughs> yeah. That's a great question. Yeah, I have. I bring toilet paper and just go behind a tree. Um, we've had athletes that literally will do it like in the front of cars and everything like that, and they're not worried. I try to at least do it a little bit discreetly, but um, I, yeah, bring some toilet paper and I don't know, are we supposed to pick up our poops? I never have. <laughs> oh my God. I have never yes. done that, but I have bought a plastic bag, put my toilet paper in there, but I, I don't, I'm not like a dog mum where I pick up my own poop. Yeah, no, no, I don't do that. Oh my, oh my God. God. What about you, Siri? That's what they're asking about pooping. Like, where do you go? I don't I think Siri's find... ever had to go. No. I, I haven't seen you give No, you I think I good. would try and find a porta potty on at a building site or something yeah. i don't know i think i would try to I find actually to be really honest i've only done that running riding i've always managed to find a toilet um which is great because you yeah one piece tri suit yeah i don't know why you're training in a one piece tri suit though um you definitely need two piece and that's another reason why i love two piece tri suits because it is so hard to go to the bathroom and it takes so long you take the top off you gotta pull it down 
it's crazy. So two-piece tri suits are always the go, and I just feel like they don't pull as much. In the swim, I used to find they pull too much as a one-piece. One-piece can be a lot hotter. You can't undo the zip. You can't pull the top up. Um, so I always have been a big fan. The only ones that are really I would recommend, to be really honest, wearing a one-piece tri suit, is if you want to go and get that one percent or 0.1 percent aerodynamics, and you know you have maybe the even Jan Frodeno doesn't wear a one-piece. So I don't even know if Daniela's is a one-piece. But you know, unless you're really, really worried about time, which I don't think you're at that point, Trish, I would get a two-piece for sure. Um, yeah. Hinkapi are amazing. We just did our little order. They're just great, but you do awesome. need to get you guys do need to get the sizing. Um, I wouldn't go just off the chart. I would ask for them to send you, um, if you're really going to do a big order, ask for them to send you the demos to try on because their sizing is a little bit out and you want to make sure you get the right size and you cannot um, send them back. So make sure you try They're it. like one to two sizes too small, yep. I think. Yep, so Siri's got to go outside um, and work with the horses real quick because little Dutchie's had a sore knee and Dr. D's here. To you get guys are amazing. <laughs> Have a great so week, So I'll just everybody. stay on to answer any more questions. Um, where will we go? Okay, one piece is terrible for long course. Yeah, I agree, Becky. I'm not a huge fan of long course. So I, th I bought them both too small and I took the tag off. Yeah, okay. Bought them both too small. Okay, so maybe you'll be able to sell that and get... Um, I would still try and get a, like a two-piece if you can. Um, that would be my option, but sometimes it's not. Maybe you can get someone to make it make it into a two-piece for you. <laughs> Bike nutrition issue. Let me see what Jamie's saying. I can't read what Jamie's saying. I'm not sure what she said. But if you're going to the bathroom all the time, yeah, I agree, Becky. That is a um, nutrition issue. Um, you just got to be mindful of what you take. You might be having too much fiber, or it could be nerves. But stick to real food if you can. If that's an issue, stick to real food as much as you can. I know that some people have had issues with um, certain brands um, that can cause... Um, Noon, I know, has caused diarrhoea in some athletes, so I just stay away from ones that I know cause, cause tummy issues. Um, and some people even have issues with F2C, so you've got to play it around and, and try and stimulate race conditions in training so you can, um, you can just work out what works for you. So... Any other questions, you guys? Because I have a really cool announcement. I don't know if Ash is on here, but we have we need a drum roll coming on here. Um, we are doing our first tri camp. Yes, Ashley. Woohoo! Okay, so we are doing our first tri camp here in like two years. We're so excited. It's gonna be similar to last time. It is gonna be more focused on hopefully some of the newbies and beginners in the sport. But of course, we're going to cater for everybody. We're going to have some top athletes that people can obviously work out with. Maybe Ellie Salthouse will even go for a ride with the top guys. Thank you, Ash. Um, so it can be beginner, intermediate, and advanced, but we really want to get some of the newbies in, and we're going to work on some stroke, and we're going to use our lake to do an open water swim as well. So basically, it's August 20... Oh, my gosh, let me get this right. 28th, 29th, um, you guys get first dibs on it. We're only taking 20, and it sold out within about three days, four days last time. Then we opened it up to 25. We cannot take more than 20 this time just because of the lane use and everything like that. So um, we're only taking 20, and I know there's two or three people in the wait, in the gates, ready to go, Karen Peterson, one of them. <laughs> um, 28th, 29th of August. So it's going to be here in Longmont. Um, we're going to do a dinner Saturday night. Obviously, Saturday, we're going to go for an amazing bike ride up the canyon. Um, we have flat sections and hill sections too. Everybody at their own pace. We have a slightly slight hill that people can go up and turn around at their own leisure. We're going to have four different groups, beginners, weekend warriors, and then intermediate and an advanced group as well. Some of the fast ones, I believe that Ben's coming out and he's going to take the fast group. Um, and then, but I really want to focus on these guys that are just getting started and the kind of the newbies um, that really want some some help with their bike setup and their technique and how to climb and just to honestly enjoy Colorado so we're gonna climb up left hand Canyon um, a little bit um, depending on how your fitness is and then we're gonna um, come back down and we're gonna do a swim in our um, pool that we swim at and it's amazing we've got the whole pool to ourselves. we booked the entire pool um, and it also includes um, a little swag bag from all our sponsors, which is a really cool stuff like goggles, Rudy Project, um, backpack and that stuff, um, F2C, and we're going to supply some nutrition and drinks and electrolyte during it. And then um, the next day, we're going to do a run on our trails. And then and all of this is doing, we're doing video work as well. So your swim will be videoed before and after. You'll get a one-on-one -on -one with me while Siri runs a session. We're taking one person at a time. We're going to go through swim technique, 
and Siri and I are going to both look at it uh, while she's got the squad going at the same time. Ash is going to be here with Aaron to help. It's going to be amazing. Some of our other coaches, Becky, will be here helping on deck as well, I believe, and possibly Maddie, I hope. Um, our Europeans probably won't get here, and, of course, unfortunately, Mel won't be able to fly from Australia. I wish she would, but we will have one in Australia one day. Um, so we're going to do swim technique before and after and give you feedback on your stroke and send it to you of the before and after. We're going to have videos being done. We're going to have photos, a photographer, and dinner that night on the Saturday. Okay, I got so excited. I'm still on Saturday. And then Sunday's the long run, and we're going to do the long run based on your fitness, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, an hour 15, even going up to an hour and a half, all on a loop where you could easily come back home in your own time and run at your own pace and not get lost, and then a treadmill work um, straight after that for like five minutes of each person to do a little video work before and after um, video assessment of your run technique. So that's why we can only have 20 because we want to get through everybody being able to do assessments on each other. Um, and uh, a lake swim and a meet and greet with our horses at our lake right here, which is about 100 yards long. We're going to do a lake swim after the run in the afternoon, meet all the horses, um, and probably do another optional dinner as well. So it's going to be amazing. Um, we can't wait. We've kept the price really, really, really low. It's $4.99. That includes everything. You just guys need to get here and get your accommodation. So... Um, normally, we used to charge $8.99 for these camps, and if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, we normally charge $1,500 for a two-day camp. So it's really, really good price, and um, I think it's totally worth it considering um, on the weekend, on Saturday, we have an event here, and we're charging $5,000 per person. So this is really cheap, and we have 20 people, and I'm hoping that we fill up pretty quick, and I hope that you can join us. Um, let me know, Ash, if you have that link ready. I don't know if we do yet, but we're going to make sure that we send it to all of you on this uh, chat first, so when I exit out, go back on in the next hour. Hopefully the landing page will be ready. I'm not sure if it is. Ash has been working her butt off. Thank you, Ash and Becky, for getting this ready. But in the next hour, we'll post this link, Ash, if you're listening, on this first, on this chat box for anybody first, first in, first served. Then we're going to send it out to our Tri Club. Um, we're going to send it out to our Tri Club, just our Tri Club members, the 300 members that we have officially. And then we're going to blast it out probably in the next 24 hours to the whole... Uh, 6,000 database and then we'll post on social media. So I'm thinking it may not even get to that stage where we share it. Um, outside of that, I probably will anyway so we can um, have people like at least sign up and hold their spots for the, for the next one because hopefully we'll do another one in maybe October or November, December. We're not sure. Okay, so let's know if you have any questions for that. We'll have the link available. You'll either get it in email tonight or Ash can post it on this chat box in about an hour or so. Um, we've almost got it ready to go. I'm really, really, really excited, and I think it's a, it's a really good price point, and hopefully most people can afford it. And flights here are very cheap to Denver, um, under 300 bucks. So, And if you guys want to join up together, we have two hotels, really great deals with hotel. One is more classy, which is Nye Wat In. Another one is um, Fairmont, I think that's what it's called, Fairmont, I think called in Longmont and it's only like a hundred and I think 150 a night or something beautiful it's really nice really new and clean and like 10 minutes away so get a group together go together share a room um, hire a car together we do have a driver who's quite cheap that can get you from the airport to you guys um, and you can even ride your bike here so we're literally 10 minutes from Longmont so I recommend Niwot or Longmont you could also stay in Boulder that's totally fine it's only like 20 minutes max but Longmont might be better so Yes, the link will be in the email. Um, that's all, you guys. Um, I wanted to announce that. You guys are the first to hear about this, so I'm very, very excited. August 28, 29, save the date. We hope to see you. And um, if there's no more questions, I'm going to say goodbye, Patrice. I hope you can come. Jamie, I'm excited to have you here. Um, I know Tricia has a triathlon that weekend. That's a bummer. But Ash will be here with amazing wife, Karen. We'll get to meet those guys too. They're a big part of our lives now, doing all these amazing events. We are going to do a Pride 5K too for Pride Month, so look out for that. Um, but thank you all. Thank you to my girls. Thank you to my wife for making this possible. Her calendar, if you saw it, and I was keep saying squeeze it in, squeeze it in, you wouldn't believe what her calendar looks like, guys. Like, I know everyone's busy, but it's just crazy. Like, I actually literally said, please, Siri, just these two days. So... She's going to be around that weekend, and we're going to be doing it together, and it's just awesome to have her here with everything she's doing. So, yay, we will see you later. Um, love you guys. Hope to see you at the camp too. Becky, yep, you can totally use my um, my road bike. I'm trying to think what I'm going to add, though, so we'll work something out. Maybe I'll put you on my mountain bike. You probably need to make it a little harder on yourself. <laughs>
Um, yep. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, let us know if you have any questions and look out for the link. It's coming soon on this page and she'll post it. Ash will post it on our group as well. Bye, guys. Thanks again for joining tonight's live chat. See these in real time. Visit TeamSeriousTriClub.com and register for just $37.